Hey Warriors, AC here. PB. Welcome to a new Warrior Talks episode. So this is the podcast where we talk about everything and anything in a very fun and powerful way. So today here we have Greg Bellon. So uh, Greg here is a Muay Thai fighter with 9 wins, 6 losses and 4 KOs. He's also a Muay Thai coach. He's a weight cutting specialist and a beast. Greg, how you doing man? Hey, I'm good man. How are you? Awesome bro. We're very happy to have you on. Yeah, I'm and uh, also for the people watching the on YouTube, you will notice that our setting is different. We're not in our training facility here. We're at the Apex Gym in Montreal. So uh, if you want to do Muay Thai, kickboxing, MMA, Apex Gym is the place to go if you're in Montreal or the greater area. And uh, we're very thankful that uh, you guys uh, let us uh, use the place for the podcast. The setting is very fitting. Yeah. So now, uh, Greg, uh, we were just talking right before uh, about your potential nicknames as a fighter. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so I have a potential too. So one um, that my coach really likes is uh, Greasy Greg. <laughs> um, he likes that you know you could uh, potential to build a character around it. You know, like the the bad guy role, I guess. Um, that name uh, came to me in high school because I was uh, one year I had I had long hair in high school uh, sometimes, and um, I would always play soccer uh, in the schoolyard at lunchtime and I was I always sweat a lot and so my hair would get really greasy after so they call me greasy Greg from that <laughs> um, now it's not uh, relatable <laughs> now it's now it doesn't work anymore yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, so there's that one and then the other one is uh, Bam Bam so that was a, a name uh, my mom would actually used to call me when I was like a child yeah, because I was very uh, destructive. I was always breaking things. I was always pulling her earrings out of her ear. Um, so she would call me Bam Bam. Um, <laughs> and I like that name because it has has a bit more personal kind of connection to it. And yeah. uh, it's more fighter related. It's also. more it's fighting related. <laughs> it fits with my style too. You know, I'm a, I'm an aggressive forward uh, puncher. I I always look to finish fights too. So. Um, so it fits with my style, but uh, but yeah. So still haven't quite uh, decided on on one of them yet. Definitely but, Bam Bam. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think <laughs> I think Bam Bam's uh, the gonna be the winner. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. think uh, that's the one I prefer to. Yeah. Because anyway, greasy hair now it doesn't uh, apply anymore. Yeah, yeah the, the, the greasy hair. hair yeah. 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 <laughs> Hard to imagine you with long hair now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was trying to do. Um, I was, I was a hockey player and uh, I played hockey in high school, so I was trying to do the hockey player thing yeah. with the long ah, hair. Yeah, you know, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, the kudongue, yeah, the flow as they call it there, yeah. so with the, with the baseball cap on and everything, but uh, didn't really suit me, no. <laughs> yeah, you went with the Chuck Liddell look. Yeah, I went with the Chuck. Well, actually, then once I uh, stopped playing hockey and I was just doing Muay Thai, I started going for the man bun. Oh. Yeah, when that w became a trend and then the furthest I got was to where it was too long to leave it down but not quite lo not quite long enough to tie it up oh. so I just had like a little tupet you know like a uh, yeah yeah I tie it up and it was just like a it would just like flop around it's like you know? if I do this I'm gonna right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like sticking up like a you know so um, then for my first fight, I decided like I'm just gonna shave my head. You know, it's just gonna feel better. I won't have my my hair was always falling in my face. When yeah, I was not training. practical for fighting. No, yeah. yeah, no. You need to see. So yeah. I shave my head, and as soon as I shave my head, I was just like, oh man, like I'm never going back to hair. <laughs> it's yeah. just a hassle, really. It is. Yeah, it's good on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it suits me good. So, and then the mohawk came in during uh, pandemic, so I was. Okay. I was always wanted to try Mohawk, and then pandemic happened. I was like, "Well, I'm staying home all the time, anyways." So, so yeah, yeah, you did that. Play yeah, around I did that, but the uh, most like very long. Okay. Not very <laughs> long, but not yeah, more yeah. long than this okay. because we are COVID. So I didn't care. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> like, yeah. hey, let's try different things. I shaved yeah. the beard, gave a Mohawk, and I like the Mohawk. So the beard came back, but yeah. the Mohawk, the Mohawk <laughs> stayed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I like it. Yeah. And uh, you talked about hockey, so uh, for people that don't know you, and actually we, d we don't know that either. Right. Uh, what is it? Tell us about your athletic background. Yeah, so I played sports since I was like four years old. I was enrolled in um, 
group uh, sports, uh, especially I yeah, started with soccer. Um, playing, uh, yeah, I've been playing soccer since I was four years old. Um, and then as soon as I got into elementary school, I was playing every single sport I could at school. Uh, badminton, basketball, floor hockey, soccer again. I think there was touch football, uh, track and field. Um, I did everything I could. Uh, I loved playing sports. I was a very active uh, uh, kid. Um, and then in high school, I started playing hockey when I was, um, I think I was 11, uh, because I was always playing street hockey with my friends. And I had a friend of mine who was a goalie, and um, so he would he showed me how to play goalie on the street hockey, and uh, I really liked it. And uh, I told my mom I wanted to, you know, play ice hockey as a as a goalie. And uh, so then when I was 11, I started in uh, Pee Wee, and um, I still remember my first time getting on the ice. It was a, it was for a tryout, and uh, that so my first time skating on ice with full goalie equipment was the tryout and uh, i remember just falling all over the place they asked me to skate backwards i didn't know how to skate backwards uh, it was pretty terrible and uh, but I, I learned quick i was always quick at uh, learning physical uh, anything physical i was a quick learner for, for sports so I, I learned it pretty quick and i got i got pretty good i played um i played uh Majin espoir um in oh, sec wow. yeah in sec four that was like the highest uh, level that i yeah, played yeah, you went far in hockey yeah i guess yeah i guess you could say that um so i made it to that level and then that's kind of where i started um kind of declining from there like uh um i wasn't playing with my friends anymore and uh after that you know you realize probably not going to make it to the nhl you know so then um I started uh, started just playing for fun mostly, um, but yeah. So that's when I started playing hockey. And in high school, same same thing. I was playing every single sport I could play. I was playing. So in high school, I was playing soccer for the city and the school. I was playing hockey for the city and the school. I played volleyball, track and field. Um, trying to think of other sports I played. Yeah, volleyball, track and field. I no the, uh, martial art. No martial art. No, no martial arts. I mean, I think I did uh, like most kids. I did like a month of karate when I was young. Okay. I don't know at what age. The only thing I remember from karate was uh, showing up late often, and every time I showed up late, I had to do fifty push-ups on my knuckles. So I did a lot of push-ups, <laughs> and um, I remember I did it with a buddy of mine. And all we wanted to do was spar. You know, in karate they make you do the kata a lot. Yeah. I had no interest in that. Um, I didn't, never practiced it, never wanted to. J me and my buddy, whenever we would show up early, we would just spar until the class started. And um, I have a memory. The first time we did sparring with the the group, um, I head kicked a kid so many times and until he cried. <laughs> and. Uh, that's all I remember from karate. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, my mom should have realized then, like, yo, sign this kid up for fighting. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, that was it for martial arts. Um, we had a bit of wrestling classes in, like, our gym classes in high school. But uh, I never, I mean, I think with my friends, we were just fooling around half the time. So I wasn't, I never really paid attention to anything. So I didn't get an appreciation for it. Um, How old were you in the in that time? Like the karate and uh, wrestling. The karate, I have no idea. Honestly, I, I really couldn't tell you. Um, probably like elementary school age. Yeah, you know? like everybody when he's young, yeah. their parents go. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they sign them up yeah, for yeah. karate. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then the wrestling in high school, that was probably like secondary two or three. So I was maybe like fourteen uh, ish, fourteen oh, okay. around there. Yeah, it was mostly. Yeah, mostly just fooling around with friends in gym class, right? And uh, and then in sec four for Mijet Espoir, I had to move uh, school. Oh, I had really? to go to uh, Collège Français in Longueuil um, for the hockey team. And uh, so that that year, other sports kind of took a, a step back. 
I think I was probably yeah I was still playing soccer for the city and even in soccer I was I was playing at a high level too I was I was playing I was a goalie as well I was playing um, double A as well okay. and then there was the year I think it was when we were 14 our team was going to move up triple A and my coach at the time told me to decide between hockey and soccer and I picked so I picked hockey um, it was a lot more fun you know in soccer on the big nets you don't as a goalie you don't get a lot of action and then uh where i was playing hockey at the time and hockey as a goalie you get a lot, ton yeah, of action yeah, yeah. you know so i remember there being games in soccer where i was telling my defense like hey don't like let them pass me <laughs> like yeah i want some more shots you know uh, yeah but then in hockey you don't have to tell your defense that so uh so i like hockey more um and so i stuck with hockey and then even in sec five after the Magenta Sport, I moved to uh, Heritage in Saint Subar, and uh, I was in the uh, I did the uh, Spahitsud program for hockey again. So for there, I was playing city hockey, school hockey, Spahitsud hockey. I did the track and field, soccer, city soccer, uh, volleyball again, uh, lots of sports, and then. And then, yeah, I was in Sejep, and then in Sejep, the sports kind of take a step back, right? And uh, I was playing, you know, beer league hockey, you know, basically beer league soccer with friends. And then when I was 20, um, about 20 or 21, um, that was when I first started Muay Thai. And then as soon as I started doing Muay Thai, I, I loved it. And <laughs> as uh, I was training for my first fight and my shins would always hurt your shins when you start doing muay thai they always hurt like uh, from kicking the bag so much i agree your shins are so soft at first you know and uh so my my shins were always like bruised and and like literally like the entire shin was just like mushy because uh, all swollen so i goaltending was terrible because anytime you go into the butterfly my like your shins you have padding but your shins are still hitting the ice so it hurt every single time and so and then in soccer the running and then even you know you have people kicking your shins so i i, I didn't want to play so i was training for a fight so i you know i didn't want to play hockey didn't want to play soccer because it kind of ruined my training so while you were training for the fight you were still doing hockey and soccer yeah wow yeah yeah and then it was just like at that at that point it was just like one game per week type of thing you know okay. um but then i i was always like at that point too i'm paying for my own sports you know so and then I missed half of the games because of training. So then I just figured, like, hey, like I'm not going to continue paying for this if I'm never showing up. So, um, so then pretty much once once I started Muay Thai, I stopped all the other sports uh, just to train full time. Uh, yeah. And uh, how did you come across Muay Thai? So I had been looking for a martial arts. Um, I was looking to fight. So I really wanted to fight. Um, because when I was growing up, I was always I was always a, a big and strong kid and uh, aggressive. Um, <laughs> whenever I was playing sports, I was always rough. And uh, playing with my friends, I was always rough. And I was in elementary school, especially, I was getting into trouble for fighting and just being overly rough with people playing. You know, like we're playing schoolyard soccer, and I'm like pushing people. You know. <laughs> and, uh, um, playing like we're playing football i was always wanted to play tackle football and in the winter we would wrestle like king of the hill you know and i was yeah. always like jumping at i didn't care about being at the top i just <laughs> wanted to you know tackle people and uh i even enjoyed falling down the hill it was fun yeah. for me like uh, um so i was always like rough a rough kid and um i was always always big and, and strong too and um so i had kind of this and I kind of developed this kind of persona of being like a like a tough guy, you know. And um, um, when I got later into high school, uh, when I was in Sec Five, there was uh, <laughs> I won't go too into detail, but uh, there was a moment where I had I had like some beef with a, with a guy, and um, you know there was like lots of talks of like yeah. you're gonna fight, you know, mm. like there was a girl involved and stuff, mm. so. You know how it is, and um, and this guy had been into many street fights. You know, I heard stories like he knocked out guys with one punch. You know, and and I was like, I was scared. You know, I'd never been in a fight before. And on top of it, 
everybody was like, yo, Greg, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna kill him. And uh, I, I didn't want to embarrass myself and, and lose like my reputation, right? Um, so I was like, I avoided it, you know, I avoided it as much as I, as I could really. And it ended up never happening. Um, but then it made me realize like, man, like, you know, sure, I'm strong and you know, like I've, I've done well in, you know, shoving matches, you know, but like if punches were going to start getting thrown, like I don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. Um, so then I wanted to try it, but I, ha I had no interest in, in street fights. Like, uh, there's been moments at bars where, um, you know, you're out and you're drunk with friends and then, you, you know, people try to get into your face and anytime that happened, I would just, I had no interest in getting involved. I was just like, why are you even doing, like, we don't even know each other. Like, why are you gonna, why do you, why do you hate me? Why do you, yeah. why do you have so angry with me that you want to, you want to fight me? Like, I don't even know your name. You don't even know my name. Like, what the, that's stupid. Uh, and I don't know if the guy has a knife on him, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm That's not a problem. With you. <laughs> you know, exactly, right? Um, so it never interested me. And uh, what interested me was fighting in a ring, you know, in a ring where it's, you know, to me, that's, you know, that's that's where I wanted to try it. And uh, so I started looking at gyms. And at first I looked at boxing gyms. I had no idea. No, I'd never heard of Muay Thai. Um, I was looking at boxing gyms. And I had been, I had visited a few boxing gyms, but none of them really like, um, interest, like, yeah, none of them were just really, they didn't like click. I don't know. They had, I th honest, now that I've learned like a bit more of the business side of things too, they had like just poor sales skills. Like uh, here I am, this, this <laughs> 20 year old kid who's, I'm, I'm showing up, walking into your gym, you know, I'm like, Hey, how's it work? What's the schedule? I don't know what questions to ask. Like. I want to do this, but they yeah. never, they just didn't like take me in. I don't know. They're just uh, like, here's the schedule. Here's the prices. And I'd be like, okay. And then I would leave and I don't know. I would never, I never went back. Um, until I had gotten a job, uh, at, uh, three amigos on uh, St. Catherine street. And on my first shift, there was a guy, uh, Dave Marin who works, he's uh, works as a referee now in the, in the local uh, scene. He uh, started talking to me about, He's training at this gym, Apex, and um, uh, he was saying, your first class is free. You can come try it. And I asked him, like, do you guys fight? Like, do you guys fight? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, we fight. And I was like, sweet. And I was like, I was like when can I come? You know, and he was like, we can start Monday next week. I was like, awesome. And uh, so I showed up Monday. And yeah, it was, it was funny. I remember walking up. I was so scared. And I actually, the first person I saw was Ryan, the, the head coach, the owner of the gym. And I was just like, ah, like I'm, I'm here with Dave. Dave told me to come, you know? And <laughs> he's like, yeah, sure, come on in. And um, all I remember from that first training was at the end of the rounds, we did like a 30 second nonstop jab cross. You, you've done it. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 not yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was, this, I was in shape, you know? And uh, you know, I was so exhausted by the end of it. I couldn't believe how how tiring punching was you know everybody i think every guy has punched in his mirror you know at home before and it's not that tiring at home in the mirror but when you're actually hitting something i was mm -hmm. so exhausted i loved it right off the bat i was coming i don't know how many times a week almost every day i think and um six months later i had my my first fight um and uh that it went really well i oh i came very close to finishing my opponent um had there been like maybe 30 seconds to a minute more i think uh, no. i think i would it was a tie it was an exhibition ah, so okay, okay. No winner but i but like i won i would have won okay, for okay. sure there's um, no points like uh, no because it's an exhibition there's there's no judges there's okay, okay. uh it was like in our gym you know, ah, we, okay, we, we okay. sell tickets like there's fans and stuff that come in it was really cool i had like I had a group of like at least 10 friends that came and my opponent had a big group of friends that okay. came too. <laughs> and so the, he walks out first and they're all yelling his name, George, George. So then I walk out, my friends, they wanted to scream louder than his yeah, friends. Yeah. So I said, Greg, Greg. And I remember like the first round, I definitely lost the first round. And so he had all the momentum. But then in the second round, uh, I had trained really hard for that fight. I was, the, what motivated me was fear. I was so terrified of embarrassing my, myself in front of all my friends and and my family yeah. my biggest fear was that i would get hit and like 
start crying and want to run out of the ring you know that was that i was so afraid of that so i was just made sure that i was going to train my ass off to to be in the best shape i could possibly be in and um so he started getting tired and because i was in good shape i was able to to, to kind of pick up and um uh, and finish the fight strong and so yeah. i i'd won the second round and, and third round and um and uh, i loved it and as soon as soon as the fight was done i was just like wow like i love this i can't wait to do this again and i just immediately wanted to um to do only this like yeah, this is all i wanted but to do muay yeah. thai is interest more than boxing um like the style the fighting style yeah i mean and uh i had i had looked up a um i, I never watched fighting growing up uh, as a kid uh, i wasn't i wasn't allowed to watch like the simpsons you know oh, uh, okay. i wasn't allowed to watch simpsons family guy yeah. <laughs> WWE, so let alone like real fighting you yeah. know i forget it the only real fights i had seen was like watching hockey you know uh, <laughs> and uh and even that like as a fighter it's not really fighting <laughs> yeah i mean it's still entertaining i love it when <laughs> yeah. it happens you know and um it's definitely hard for sure to be like on your skates and uh, and throwing yeah, punches and it's you gotta give them respect <laughs> it's, it's, art. it's bare knuckle and <laughs> yeah and you know back in the day not so much anymore but you know 10 years ago these you know some of these guys would fights would fight like every game you know two three times a week yeah i heard they even, they train uh, for fight actually with uh, yeah a lot of them <laughs> just you know, a lot of them would just train yeah to fight <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the goons exactly, yeah you know? Um, yeah. yeah yeah they would like uh and and it's funny actually most of them they got drafted to the nhl because they were very good hockey players but then once you get to the level of the nhl you're not at the top anymore and you have to you got to provide for the team somehow so you become <laughs> a fighter you know <laughs> um but yeah so it interested I never really thought of it at the time. Uh, I started doing Muay Thai and, and I liked it, so I didn't think of oh, okay, boxing. Okay. Because it's just, just arms, now yeah. you have the kicks. Yeah. Um, you prefer the kicks? Like, are you yeah, consider yourself a good kicker? or? Even though, so... Um, so I've had... Uh, since I started training now, it's been about uh, eight years, I uh, I've had two hip surgeries and which with you know the that time span was about was about three years of uh of being injured with my hips so i couldn't kick much in those three years and so i did a lot of boxing and i remember heading into my so my boxing got got good because of that um so i'm, I'm grateful for it you know it was uh, i still became a better fighter from it and um but i remember going into my second hip surgery And finally, it was like, okay, I'm going to get this second surgery. And then once I recover from this surgery, like, no more issues with my hips, you know? Like, I'll be fine. I'll be able to kick again and do jujitsu and do wrestling. And I'll, be, I'll be good. And I just remember thinking, like, in the month before, I was just like, man, I'm so sick and tired of just boxing. Because, <laughs> mm. okay. yeah, when you get used to doing Muay Thai, you get used to punching, kicking, kneeing, elbowing, clinching, like just throwing hands is boring you know Thank it's you. not and it's not enough i don't know it's uh you're so limited i find in uh yeah in punching i you know i it's fun to do every now and then you know sometimes with the team we, we do just boxing sparring and it's fun because you can you can have fun with it you can get real low in your stance and you could you know you can kind of get away with having your hands down and being you know you have that boxing kind of um I don't know, boxers are always kind of cocky, I find, you know, they have they, a lot more taunting and... Especially, like, the big names. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's fun to do every once in a while, but, but no, uh, more, I, I like Muay Thai so much more yeah. than, uh, than just boxing. Yeah, for okay. sure. For sure. And uh, a, a question that I was wondering, um, between MMA, Muay Thai, Muay Thai slash kickboxing, yeah. and just boxing. Yeah. Which one would you say is the most dangerous one for like? Uh, hmm. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a good question. So, I think boxing is the most dangerous um, because you have you only have two targets. You have the head and the body, and a lot of times in 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 boxing, you know. So because you only have the the head and the body as a target a lot of the the strikes thrown are to the head 
and the the fights are long. I think in pro it's like twelve rounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think amateur it's like six rounds. But um, so you see a lot more headshots, and then you have the eight count as well. So especially with when it comes to when it comes to, to head injuries, which are probably the most dangerous injuries that you can get in the sport. Yeah. And you know you get you get a fighter who gets who gets KO'd for a second, gets gets back up. It's it's always the when you have a concussion, it's always the the um, the repetition, the the second shots. You know, like you, you already have uh, a head injury, a, a small concussion, then you get hit again, and yeah. that's that's usually what's worse. Whereas if you compare it to MMA, if you get dropped, there's no eight count. The the fight, you know, the ref, uh, you know, if you're out, you're out. The ref will will stop it right away. And I heard also they have small gloves, so they have less impact, repetitive. Like mm-hmm. boxing, you have repetitive impact, so right. like Mohammed Ali yeah. uh, finish with... Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, the small gloves, you have to be a bit more careful with how you punch too, because you can really injure your hand. You get a lot more cuts and bruises because of it, but, I mean, cuts and bruises aren't a big deal. Um, it's the, it's the brain the, damage. It's the brain damage, that's really the, the dangerous one. Yeah. Um, you, see, you, see it a lot, you see a lot of knockouts in Muay Thai also. But in Muay Thai and, and in kickboxing, because you know you can kick the legs, you can you can kick the body, you can clinch or you knee the body. Um, there is a bit less um, shots to the head than in, than in boxing, I find. So I'd say I'd say boxing out of all the combat sports, boxing would be the most dangerous. Then probably Muay Thai, and then I mean the least dangerous probably like Jiu Jitsu. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <in the> <laughs> you just tap. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but Muay Thai, uh, the old, like old style. I think they just fight like this without glove. You know. Yeah. In, in no, they. they yeah. So there's still fights in Thailand where you have the ropes. Yeah. Um, oh. you, they still do it. Um, yeah. You still see that. And again, I don't think that, that necessarily causes more brain damage. I think it just causes more cuts. More yeah. cut. A lot more cuts. Yeah. Um, And more quick fight. Like, because one hit is, yeah. is like more stiff, so knock out more easily. So oh. I, I don't know that necessarily knockouts uh, knocks people out more easily because knockouts happen from a, a whiplash effect where the brain kind of hits the inside of the of the skull, you know. So mm. whether it's a a punch, an elbow, a kick, a knee, you know, um, the whiplash effect it, it, it happens no matter what you're getting hit with. Um, that doesn't take you know people get concussions you know I've heard of people getting concussions they they lift their head and they hit a table and they you know they get a concussion um, yeah yeah <laughs> it's uh, it's usually it's usually it usually happens when people get hit while they're not expecting to get hit mm. um, so yeah. whether it's with a bare knuckle whether it's with a boxing glove okay. you know one of when I was my first year in Thailand We were doing um, hard boxing sparring with, we had headgear and 20 ounce gloves. So 20 ounce gloves, there's a lot of padding, right? So people think that, people think that with the headgear and 20 ounce gloves, it mitigates the effect of, of concussions. But um, I was doing some hard sparring and I got a brain hemorrhage um, from, well, from doing that. I didn't even get knocked out. I just, I remember getting hit one good shot and I was like, whoa, and, and, um, I was a bit shaken up, but I wasn't. I wasn't knocked out. I finished the training session. That we hit the bag after, hit the pads. I my head hurt, but uh, I didn't know any better. I did sprints after. Um, yeah, I was uh, pretty nuts. But, but so even with even with the big gloves and and the headgear, it didn't uh, doesn't stop concussions. You mm-hmm. know, it's um, it's really it's just when you don't expect the shot to come in, so you don't you don't brace for it, and then you get that that kind of whiplash in the inside your your skull um, and yeah. do you train your neck for that um yeah i've done some neck uh exercises yeah um i have a pretty i have a pretty thick neck already yeah. so like, i don't do it i don't focus on it too much but um but i've done some some neck exercises uh mm-hmm. especially times when i've been there was funny uh it was funny there was a time when i was recovering from hip surgery you're pretty limited physically in terms of what you can do And man, me if if I go two days without training or working out, like I start to go crazy. <laughs> so I need to I had to be doing something every day. 
And so I have to really be smart with my workouts. Yeah. You know, if I did everything on Tuesday, then Wednesday, I, you know, I'm sore everywhere. I can't do anything. So I, uh, I remember I would have one day a week where I would train forearms and neck. I was just doing neck and forearms once a week. So it's well, like yeah. today's neck and forearm day. Uh. It, it's under, uh, it's, it's muscle important, but yeah. not a lot. Uh, but I guess fighter train. Yeah, but I, yeah. I guess like it's very uh, sport specific. It is. Yeah. 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 Because it is, yeah. usually, like, you won't see people like with like big traps, big necks, big. Uh, yeah, I mean, like it is. Really yeah, it's very sport specific. You see, like, I think mostly combat sports, really. Yeah, football also. Game. Maybe foot. Yeah, that would make yeah. sense. Football, a lot of like it's big in wrestling. Wrestlers are known to. Yeah, yeah, big <laughs> neck. Like, once I started yeah. doing wrestling, my my yeah. neck was often sore. Um, yeah, judo you're pushing judo. with your head a lot. Yeah, judo, I'm sure too. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and like in Muay Thai, when we clinch, you use your head a lot as well, but not as much as in wrestling. In wrestling, you, you really use your push with your head often. Uh, so. And uh, also for the the question I asked, you also feel like the there's more like range in uh, Muay Thai and MMA since like right? you yeah. can kick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true too. That uh, that changes. We're in boxing. Well, boxing is a lot of close range. Um, yeah. Even. Uh, Yeah, whenever you know you you work with a lot of um, boxing coaches, and you see that a lot of times, like especially the hooks and the uppercuts, they they tend to throw them short. Whereas in Muay Thai, yeah, but it doesn't really apply to Muay Thai because at that range, you're either going to elbow or you're going to clinch. Yeah. So the punches are long, and even before you get into that punching range, there's the kicking range. That you know, you're where guys are using push kicks to the body, you know, uh, roundhouse to the body. So. Um, But the uh, ultimate question, uh, what do you think if a uh, wrestler versus a Muay Thai fighter and a boxing fighter, who do you think is going to win on a street fight? In a street fight? Yeah. Um, I think the Muay Thai fighter. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit biased, you know. But I think, um, yeah, I think the Muay Thai. Because, I mean, the wrestler, depend. you know, you're not going to take someone down on concrete you know it's and and i think a street fight usually starts from close range so if you get into a, a street fight with a muay thai fighter he's going to clinch you up and and elbow you you know and uh if you've never been in a clinch or you know even you can use a clinch against against the wrestler and stop them from taking you down if, if you're good at clinch and um, And then you get the elbows going and whenever I have people come in and they try to, they ask me like, yo, I want to learn self-defense or get good for street fights. I teach them how to throw elbows because it's the most, yeah. it's the it's most dangerous cool. yeah. uh, weapon there is. And because it's street fights always close range, yeah. no one's expecting to get hit with an elbow. So it's also, I think it's very like, it's sharp. Yeah. yeah. It's sharp and yeah. it's, open. Yeah. it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's more than a, a normal yeah fist. and you, with the hand yeah. you can hurt your hand well, yeah especially if you don't know if, if you're not well trained you're not going to throw punches properly and you're going to injure your hand more than anything you're probably going to break your hand trained fighters break their hands all the time yeah. in, in fights so yeah. an untrained <laughs> fighter uh, for sure they're going to injure their hand you know uh, i've seen i worked in a bar for a while for a couple of years and um i remember coming home you know at like 4 a.m downtown montreal you see a lot of street fights and I would just always like look from the other end of the street. I would just look and watch and laugh because it's so entertaining. Guys are throwing punches like this, <laughs> and they're clearly hitting with the inside of their hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, people who don't train often, they uh, don't know how to punch, and uh, it's not very effective. Yeah. Yeah. If you could, yeah. So I, I teach people to throw elbows. So. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that was a good question because also I feel like Muay Thai. Again, it's like the most uh, versatile uh, between the the three because I feel like if you go for boxing, you know you don't have the legs. Yeah. So a guy might kick. I, I never. I don't really watch street fights, but I've seen right. a couple. Of, you know, like with their high guard. Yeah. And yeah, you see a lot of weird you stuff. Don't, you don't like really <laughs> see kicks, but you yeah. know, yeah. you you just have your hands and wrestling. What's cool with wrestling is like, like you said, you're often close train, so you can right. go for like grabs, uh, grapples, and stuff. Yeah. But also, y you don't damage the person. You can. Yeah. Uh, not less damage. So. Unless like you. Pin them yeah, if you slam them, I think I've heard stories where guys, 
Oh, Double yeah. leg takedown, slamming, but he hits ah, yeah, concrete enough, yeah. and <laughs> dies, you know? Yeah. And, I get yeah, so. yeah. But if you go down, like, on the ground, and there's, like, other people around you, they can kick you. So yeah, that's true, too. You yeah, you don't want to go, go on, uh, that's down like on a street fight. That's uh, why for uh, street fights. It's well, it's not very, very good. One-on-one on one is, yeah. is good, but if it's two-on-one, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can only do, where, you know, with, with Muay Thai, and even with boxing, you can take on multiple opponents, uh, yeah. you know, with your footwork and you keep your range and, um, yeah. So I think for street fights, you want to be using striking uh, yeah. more than grappling for sure. However, yeah. with the striking though, what I don't like as much is that there's like no not much control. So like when you punch him, it's like either zero or ten. Like you punch him and then he's out. Like with judo and uh, I guess jujitsu too and wrestling. There's like a bit more control, so instead of like beating the guy, which is very effective. Right? <laughs> if you're fighting for your life, <laughs> you do what you're doing. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. You know, you can like control the guy easier. Yeah, that's and true. You tell him, okay, yeah. look, or you choke him. Or yeah. Something. Then you put him on his head, lift his legs up, and right. Oh, yeah, you have less. Uh, basically, the person is it can go wrong. You know, if you can kill actually with someone with yeah. your strikes. So yeah. So uh, but as like, uh, as fighters, if you at least that's how it is in Canada. If, um, for example, like me, I'm a, I'm a fighter, I'm a coach. If I get into a uh, a fight anywhere out on the streets or anything like that, and I and I seriously injure somebody, um, I can. For me, it's automatically I would be getting charged with aggravated assault. So you have like you have assault, and then you have assault with a deadly weapon, and then you have aggravated assault. Um, as anybody who's a, a trained fighter. Um, coach, you automatically fall into the aggravated assault, uh, aggravated assault category because you're supposed to be able to, to kind of control yourself, you know. Oh, unless, really? unless you're really in a in a situation where you 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 really believe that your life is in danger, um, you'll get you'll get charged with the aggravated assault. And uh, I don't know what the fines are and the you know the That's the okay. time <laughs> is, but uh, I can imagine it's it's a uh, it's a lot of problems we I don't need. Imagine a lot of problems we don't need. So yeah, it is true that you know if. If, I, if I'm in a bar and some guy's talking shit and I elbow him, knock him out, you know, give him give him brain damage, like I can get in serious trouble. So, but um, I think uh, that's why too. It's good with uh, in a street fight. It's probably better like hit them in the body or something and uh, yeah. kick him in the leg. I feel like I feel like if I'm in a street fight and I kick somebody in the leg, somebody who's never been kicked in the leg before, and I kick you in the leg, you're gonna drop. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty confident in that. Yeah. And um, if police come and they're asking me questions, I feel like I can get away with just like, hey, I, I, I kicked him in the leg. Like, this guy, you know, he's he's a wuss. I just kicked him in the leg. Like, it's not my fault, you know? <laughs> he's just, he's, you know. I yeah, no uh, injuries. So there's no serious, serious injury, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I think they'll let me off. I hope they would let me off. Yeah, he can walk it off. <laughs> exactly, you know, yeah. give him a week and, you know, you'll, he'll be fine. He's back in the bar. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and also, like, with the Muay Thai, like you said, you can go for the legs. As in boxing, like you can't really go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you maybe well. in a street fight, you, your best bet would be to th honestly throw body punches. Yeah. Uh, again, someone who's never been punched in the body, they don't know how to properly brace for a body <laughs> shot. If you give a good body shot to someone like that, they're they're going down uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're in a street in a street fight and you, yeah you do want to be careful that you don't injure the guy too seriously you know because uh, you can get in serious trouble for that so yeah body shots leg kicks that's the way to go for yeah. sure <laughs> but guys just so you know yeah, you not should. encourage <laughs> street fighting <laughs> don't okay. condone yeah do it, do it in the gym yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. do it in the gym do it in the ring okay yeah at home with, with your street. buddies uh, whatever exactly. yeah <laughs> but if worse comes to worse you know what to do yeah body <laughs> shots <laughs> and leg kicks and speaking of uh, the gym and the, the ring, uh, how is like let's say like for like the TBAs you did? Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that too. Um, for like a big fight or anything, how is your like? Do you go like on a fight camp? Like how does your training look like? Yeah, so for me, I train all year round. I'm always training. I'm always I'm always eating well. I'm always sleeping well. Um, I don't I don't party much. Um, when I'm in a fight camp. It's pretty much the intensity of the training picks up a lot. Um, maybe I add a couple sessions here and there, just a bit of different. I change up my conditioning where it's more based on power, explosiveness, 
um, more sprint, more for cardio, more like sprints as opposed to long cardio. Um, uh, why? Because the fight's short, right? So fight is, is for us right now. At most, it's three three minute rounds. So it's it's short. So um, so more similar. Yeah. So space. I try to I try to have my conditioning be more similar to what I'm going to be doing in yeah. the ring. Um, whereas uh, outside of fight camps, I'm my conditioning is more. You know, I'm I'm looking to get stronger. Um, more endurant um but yeah once once the fight is booked and and i'm about to, uh, i'd say six weeks out of the fight then i'm really solely focused on that fight um for the tbas because it's a tournament and you can fight you know you can you can fight four times in four days by the way what does tba stand for uh yeah um, so it's not to be announced uh, <laughs> most people think it's that um, <laughs> it's very confusing it's the thai boxing association okay so the actual okay. tournament is called the Uh, Thai Boxing Association World Muay Thai Expo uh, Exposition and it's the largest tournament in North America this year they had over a thousand fighters they actually had to stop taking fighters at one point because they, they had too many fighters um, yeah I saw the fights there were so many people yeah so many you fighters. have it's madness man you have all ages all ages you have yeah from like 10 years old to, to 60 you know um, it's really uh, all ages all sizes um and yeah it's madness you have there's four rings and there's fights going on all day from nine to five nine to six all day long fights on all four rings um in des moines iowa uh, middle of nowhere <laughs> um, and uh yeah so when you're training for that because it's a bit different you you got to get used to um training hard multiple days in a row so You know, I, I had some weekends where, remember, I, I sparred on the Friday night, and then I sparred Saturday morning, and then I sparred Saturday afternoon, just to kind of get used to sparring. Mm. You got to get used to sparring injured. You know, with, you got a sore leg. Well, in the, it's very possible that in the tournament, you know, you show up after day two, day three, and you show up with a sore leg. Like uh, I've done that tournament a couple times, and my my coach, for example, when when he competed and and uh, he won the tournament. At the finals, he showed up with a broken foot, and the day before, he had gotten dropped. So, it, like, uh, or no, he didn't get dropped. He got rocked, um, which is... Uh, so he don't, fight with a broken foot. Yeah, so he fought with a, oh. with a broken foot <laughs> and a concussion. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. And he still won. Uh, so he won the finals. We yeah. won. Getting rocked is like getting punched hard. And yeah, so cold. getting rocked is when... Um, So in my fight, about three fights ago, I got rocked. Um, so it's like you get hit and things are kind of moving and you're just like, woo, and you're, you're not, you know, you're not knocked out. You're still standing and you still see what's going on. You're still awake. Um, but your legs aren't all there. You know, your legs are a bit wobbly and things are kind of moving. Um, yeah, that's getting rocked. Um, getting dropped that's where you got knocked out for a second you know or a second or two and you made getting dropped basically you got knocked out but you, you got back up okay. and then you're able to keep fighting and if you get knocked out it's you got knocked out like yeah. you're you're out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah so he uh he had gotten rocked and um fought the next day with a broken foot concussion and still managed to win so oh. yeah yeah uh, it was beast Um, uh, so yeah so when you're training for the TBAs you got to get used to you know like normally whereas a normal training you know like oh your legs you kind of hurt your leg the other day okay maybe don't spar today take it easy rest recover but this is kind of like no you kind of got to get used to it you know you gotta you gotta test you gotta get used to making adjustments where you know if, if this foot hurts okay maybe you're gonna have to change your stance maybe you have to change your game plan you gotta find a way to win with the injury because um, you might have to do that <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah. yeah those tournaments it's uh it's not fun <laughs> it's not fun but but you learn a lot and um it's a great way to get a lot of experience in a short amount of time yeah um, i imagine yeah in a, in a, what was it like a weekend you got like yeah in a weekend uh, so this time we had a we last time so i had a small bracket we we're only five so i fought uh, i fought twice um twice in in two days um 
that's good. You get you get a good amount of experience in a short amount of time. You know, uh, you you learn a lot. And um, the past two times, yeah, I fought twice. Once I fought three times. So, so you have a lot of footage after that. You know, you have a lot of things to kind of you, you look at all your footage and you you have a lot to kind of study and you can you can say like, hey, I need to be working on this, this, and that moving forward now. Um, um, so it's good when you get a good, good amount of experience. As a fighter, what do you think is the most uh, efficient uh, body type? Like big guy, s skinny, or it depends on the context? It's it, it depends on the on the context, I think. And the most I think the most efficient style is. Uh, can you get your mic a bit closer? Yeah. So the mo I think the most efficient style is where you pick the style that fits your body. Um, so example in Muay Thai. If, if someone's tall and, and lanky, for them, usually you're going to look at, you want this guy to be using, you know, um, he'll be very dangerous with knees and uh, elbows. Um, uh, if you are very fat and big. Yeah, so yeah. like for me, for my weight class, I'm not fat, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, a, for my weight class, I, I'm short and, I, and I'm stocky, like I'm thick. Okay. Um, for, for a style like that, it's more boxing. Uh, okay. A lot of boxing. You're gonna be if you're if you're in your weight class. If you're short and heavy, you're gonna usually you're gonna be more powerful than the other guy. So, so you're you're looking to to use your power, your strength. Whereas the other guy who's tall and skinny, he's gonna be looking to especially keep range, keep yeah. distance, yeah. and um, and especially the tall guys. They have just they're so pointy um, and sh the sharp pointy bones. They just hurt. <laughs> um, Whereas, like, us thicker guys, we're just looking to, to kind of power and, okay. and uh, kind of just smash a bit, you know. Okay, uh, okay. So I think, it, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's about, you know... And, uh, adapting yourself. It's about adapting your, yeah. your style to your body type your, and, and your, your personality a bit, too. Some people mm. have an innate style where they're more... They're, more, they're going to be a more pressure, aggressive fighter. Some people, they like to play the the counter game where they like to back up and, and counter you um so it's it's about it's about fitting finding the style that that, that works for you yeah. and you're i imagine you adapt also f if you have a tall guy you will adapt your style if you have a small guy i mean no? there's difference yeah um you know i've heard a lot of people say you know some coaches will tell you you know doesn't matter what the other guy is doing like you do your thing and uh, he make him adapt to you you know mm, okay. some people have a different approach where they're like okay this guy's tall he has this style so i'm going to use these different types of tools it, it again it, it depends on the the fighter and his personality type you know mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah at the end of the day it's it's about uh um kind of just expressing your yourself as a, yeah as a, as and a knowing player. i guess you're yeah, yeah like i remember george st pierre said you know like um in his book like he had he's had many different coaches and he he said uh, there was one line that i liked he was like i don't care if bruce lee's in the room teaching me something i'll try what the coach tells me to do but if if i don't like it if i don't find it if i don't feel comfortable with it if i don't find it works for me i'm not going to use it you know like i don't i don't care if it's bruce lee showing me this you know yeah uh, so at the end of the day, that's what matters is that's the important thing is to, to, you know, you have a lot of different coaches. It's good to have different coaches. And then you, you kind of pick and choose yeah. from different coaches, different style. You, you have to try it, try it first. And then if it works for you and it, and it clicks, then you keep doing it. And if it, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't click, you, you throw it out yeah. no matter what. You know, they say, oh, you're a short guy. You got to throw X, Y, Z. But if you try it and you never land it in sparring, you don't understand it, it doesn't work, then then you shouldn't use it. Yeah. Work, you work, use what works for you. Yeah. Uh, it's really the way to go. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. you don't want to like, work on something that is something that you, yeah. Are. However, like there's like things that you need to know, you know how to counter them, but like, right. Not yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to have a base of everything. Yeah. Like, especially like example for me, my body type, like I'm not really going to be throwing elbows much, especially if they're taller, like it's hard to get your elbow up there, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't train elbows all that much. I'm never really looking to, to set up. Uh, uh, I'm not spending a great time of, of my training setting up elbows. But you, you still want to have a base of it, of yeah. knowledge, you know. And then if the opportunity does present itself, you can you can take advantage mm -hmm. of it. And also so you can, you, so you know how to counter elbows too. Sometimes sure. in fight, uh, 
but I don't, I don't have so much experience but I know sparring sometimes I do something and like oh where did that come from like right, yeah. because I learned it but I didn't thought it was useful or sometimes in Kung Fu we did like spinning back fist yeah, yeah. like um, why you spin <laughs> just do a back fist right. but I understand like when he was uh, in my back or something uh, something happened right I uh, use it and go oh okay okay <laughs> yeah and you see um with the spinning back fists, you guys use it a lot, especially if they miss a kick. Yeah, they miss the kick and then they turn their back, so they follow through. With the yeah, yeah. When with every time you, you see him coming yeah. forward, you know, you, you're spinning back fists. One of yeah. our teammates, one of my teammates, uh, Morgan, she, uh, she's that's like one of her signature moves is uh, sh like she'll kick and she'll miss on purpose sometimes and then follow up with the with the spinning, spinning back, back fist. And, okay. I think she chipped my tooth once with that in training. I <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wasn't expecting it. And so I was kind of just chilling and then bang. And I, yeah, I was like, fuck, I think I chipped my tooth. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. It's legit. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. It's also like so. unexpected. Yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't expect yeah. that. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is yeah, the... Especially, you see, you know, if, if you dodge their, you know, you lean back, you, do you dodge their kick, you're, you're thinking, oh, okay, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. you now. And then <laughs> pop, and then you get hit. Yeah. No, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, like, uh, when we uh, trained together, when we used to spar, like me and PD, uh, we were doing like, um, you know, like MMA. And I remember like, PD often times like, I punch or whatever, or he punches, and then he comes with a backhand. Mm. And I found that it wasn't like knocking or anything, right. but it was, you know, it was annoying. It was damaging. Yeah, it distracts you too. Yeah, yeah. is that You're like, like what? what is that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> is that something like you use in Muay Thai, like backhands or? Um, not not really you don't really see it in muay thai um um nah you don't you don't really see that type of stuff in in muay thai especially not in traditional muay thai traditional muay thai like you have a lot of purists in the sport and there's a kind of a culture of like keep everything simple 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 you know jab cross kick knee elbow elbow <laughs> no yeah. you know no purists and traditional Muay Thai they're like they're just they don't like fancy stuff you know the, they want you to just always it's a bit flat footed they want you standing your ground and a Muay Thai ring is very small too it's a lot smaller than a boxing ring because like just they want two guys standing face to face hitting each other standing their ground kind of just blocking strong hitting back it's very really tough martial it is yeah. yeah and so in um, in Thailand too it, it's still a bit unclear exactly how they score the fights. I mean, you hear different people say different things, um, but uh, what they they like to see you keep your composure. Um, so they don't want to see you if you if you lose balance. Like let's say somebody kicks you, even if you block it and you but you lose balance, you you don't look good. They don't like it. You mm -hmm. know, um, they want you standing strong. Uh, grounded. Yeah, okay. they don't like it when people back up. Um, they, they want you standing your ground or going forward most of the time. Um, so you train in Thailand? Yeah, I've trained in yeah. Thailand. Uh, How went, was that experience? I went twice. It was really cool. Um, uh, it's it's a completely different world, um, and they train so differently. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Even if it's the same uh, martial art, yeah. they train differently. Okay. Yeah, like here, um, you know, we're always trying to train so hard and we're trying to go 100% all the time it's all rah, 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 most of the time you know and sparring is always hard um, whereas they're like man they're so relaxed and oh, yeah. laid back you know like they still train hard but they're not they're, they never really seem to be going 100% in, in, in training um, and um, they're very loose like I remember my first time in, I went to Thailand um I trained for six weeks before I got injured, um, and for six weeks, all they told me was, relax, relax, they, they have like, sabai, sabai, that's how you say relax in Thai, <laughs> okay. and so every day, twice a day, they're telling me, sabai, 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 like, you always, you, you go there thinking you're going to learn so much, and, and really, they just, they just focus on the basic stuff, basic, yeah. basic, like, I remember the, from again that that first trip, six weeks there. They just were telling me sabai sabai and elbows in. It's like basically all I learned for, for six weeks. But so if you master, I think basic, you can yeah, be deadly. Yeah, and that yeah. 
having that it goes it goes so far and um you realize it after having many fights you start realizing like those small little basics really make a difference and then it's so hard to to break those habits and, yeah. and kind of retrain yourself is very hard so it's better to do that at, at, at the beginning and, and to focus on that and you know here we are we're more um we're a bit more rushed uh, oh yeah I, I thought it was the opposite but no uh, like we're okay. rushed in the sense of we're trying to i find we often try to teach people too many things um, too early on we were trying to teach them all these uh, these okay. fancy tricks and, and mm. skills and um, without we don't necessarily put as much emphasis on the uh, on basics. the basics yeah. um, it's people I think yeah I don't know it's um, it's also a cultural thing too I think people there they're everybody's everywhere, everywhere you go people are just so relaxed and, and <laughs> back there's no one's in a rush to go anywhere um Uh, whereas here people want things fast they want yeah, now, yeah. you know um, so if you it, it, it's you know it's like if you have somebody who comes to the gym and you spend you know a year with them just focusing on basic fighting stance he will quit jab cross <laughs> they're gonna quit yeah. halfway through they're gonna go to another gym who's gonna teach them spinning back fist you know and uh, yeah everything so um, so at the same time it's like as a coach we kind of have to teach people the, the fun stuff the fancy things to keep people engaged mm. and entertained while still trying to teach them the basics, you know, the, basics the fundamentals, the fundamentals mm. and try yeah. you know the, the challenge is trying to make that fun and, and, and engaging yeah. Yeah. you want to have a foundation yeah before for going sure, you yeah. know if, if you want to be a good fighter for sure you know uh, you have to have the, the basics is what's going to win fights uh, in the long term um, Sure. And what is the Muay Thai training, um, physical training? Not the necessarily like the sparring or punching technique, like but physical why well, conditioning. In Thailand? Uh, or Thailand here? here, yeah, both. I mean, here, pff, there's no set standard. People do diff different things. It's more MMA style. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. What I do, um, so I was working a lot with a um, athletic therapist um, who was giving me programs. Um, And it was all stuff based on, especially the previous injuries that I've had, a lot of like strengthening your joints, um, a lot of stability work, um, um, yeah, like like sports specific. You know, I, I I don't know exactly what how to classify his his trainings, but uh, he was an athletic therapist, and and I had programs with him for a while. Uh, recently, I started going to uh, Origin Studios for uh, functional, um, what's it called, uh, functional patterns uh, training. Uh, uh, I think it's called functional pattern I never training. It. Yeah, it's kind of newer, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's called functional pattern training. Um, All right. Pretty sure it's that. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing uh, these days. Um, I was doing that leading up to the fight camp and uh, that I had previously, and uh, I really liked it. It was it was very challenging, especially mentally. Um, uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of different coordination where you're moving your bodies in in ways you're not necessarily used to, and very sport specific as well. So I, I really liked it. Um, uh, so I've kept up with that. And for me, for me, my conditioning now, and I, and I think again, it depends on the fighter too. Like we have a young guy, you've met him, uh, Mahena, yeah, uh, or Bernard, and uh, he. So he's a young guy, just turned 21 a couple of days ago, and he's very skinny. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to get him. We're pushing him to lift weights now. We're like, yeah, you got to put some muscle on. You got to get stronger. Um, for me, I'm already a pretty muscular, strong guy. So for me, it's mostly my conditioning right now. I'm doing a lot of mobility work. I'm not very mobile, so I'm trying to get more more mobile i'm just for me my conditioning is mostly now just to um uh, try to avoid injuries um i've had a lot of injuries in the past now and i'm sick and tired of getting injured so i'm just trying to avoid injuries at all costs right now so that's what most of my conditioning is uh, revolving around nowadays um but other than that you get conditioning because of my hips i don't i, I can't run anymore either So a lot of my cardio now I, I do skipping and just bag work, pad work. You know, training is is conditioning too. Yeah. So, you know, lots of bag work, mm -hmm. pad work, sparring. You know, lots of rounds, lots of reps. Uh, wow. So you can't run for like five kilometers. I mean, I can do it, you know, but it's um, it's painful. It's just not good, and I've been 
from my trainers I've been advised against it just because well, down the road it's it might cause me problems so while I'm still training I kind of stay away from the running and um, for now anyways and uh, yeah I just try to find other ways and I mean I don't think you need to be able to run 30 minutes or an hour to fight six minutes you know three yeah, nine mm-hmm. minutes yeah, it doesn't really make sense to me um, because in Kung Fu, we have like traditional training stuff. Right. Like we have uh, the planche, we do, but on the fist. Okay. And we have the horse stance. Right. So we stay like in a squat position for a very long time. Right, right. So I, I thought like Muay Thai having... I mean, so traditional, like if you go to Thailand, you're doing a lot of sit-ups, a lot of abs, a lot of um, a lot of chin-ups. But they do, their, they do chin-ups, like they won't do... They don't do like strict chin ups where it's all the way down, you know, like a crossfit core engaged, you know, coming up all the way, chest to the bar. Yeah. It's a lot of like one, two, three, yeah, four, yeah. five. Because it, it's explosive, they need that. Yeah, it is. And it is actually good for clinching. Because yeah. in the clinching, you're, you're, yeah. it's, it's explosive movements. And so it actually is good for clinching. And um, lots of sit ups, uh, lots of running. They're huge on running. Like if you go to Thailand and if you want to fight, they, they tell, they'll tell you like, you have to run. If you do, if you don't run, you don't fight. Yeah, <laughs> you have yeah. to run if you want to do Muay Thai in Thailand. They um, do lots of skipping. Wait, wait. They don't really do no. weights. They do uh, no. They don't really do weights. Some like and it's funny. They're very um, the Thais. Uh, they like their uh, aesthetics. Oh, yeah. Um, so you'll see. The only, most of the time weights I've seen them do is bicep curls. They just, <laughs> <laughs> even though they're just they'll be in the mirror. And they're like yeah, bicep curls. Okay. You know. Um, they like their aesthetics. Um, do they do cool stuff like uh, handstand push-up? No, 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 no. Just They're a basic very old school push-up, okay, okay, sit push up, up, chin up. Okay. Okay, simple. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> simple. Cool. Running, skipping, yeah. lots of bag work, pad work, sparring, clinching. Okay, yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah. I like the simple. weights. It's more of a Western thing. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, and I think it has its benefits, especially you know like uh, for developing a foundation of, of strength but yeah. I, but I think for for MMA you you want to have like nowadays people seem to be getting um, what's very popular is, is a lot of mobility um, where you want to be like and even I've heard uh, like functional range conditioning um, wow. where you start really looking at strengthening your joints so traditional weightlifting you know you're strengthening the the major muscle groups but your smaller the smaller muscles surrounding the joints tend to get ignored and that's where injuries happen right so that was one thing i learned when i had my hip surgeries and you start you know you have the hips you have your adductor your hip flexor your abductors you got you know you have glute med glute max you know glutes you got like three different freaking glutes i don't know uh, the hamstring and like even in the hamstring there's so many different angles that you can just switch your move your leg one bit and you're getting a whole new muscle you know and it's um very humbling uh very humbling experience where it's like you're in a position and then you have uh, my trainer at the time uh, like uh you know she's like she was like a dance she was a former dancer you know she's a very very feminine woman and she's just like hey so get into this position and you lift your leg like this and her leg goes you know all the way up and i struggling to get it off the ground you know it's very humbling um but then you realize like wow like you think you're strong because you can because you can squat heavy or bench press but then you can't even lift your own leg off the floor you know <laughs> so um and that that i think is more relatable to our sport than um than weightlifting would would be um, it's more like an extra you think like a yeah, bonus yeah i think if if again for someone who if it's your weakness that you're like a weak person then yeah maybe weightlifting you know for a couple of years will be a good thing for you yeah, mm-hmm. but if you're already somebody like somebody like myself i'm already I, I was doing weightlifting in high school you know throughout high school and uh cjap so like I, I i'm a big muscular strong guy but i'm fucking stiff as hell you know so like for me weightlifting isn't going to help me right now it's i need to be doing like mobility you know um yeah more mobility work and unfortunately the stuff we need to do is not the stuff we enjoy doing so <laughs> it's, it's also yeah. that's sucks, the tough know. part too yeah what? it is what it is and mm-hmm. uh you know you're talking about mobility and that's a problem i have too 
And I don't know if that's a thing you get in Muay Thai as much, but in Judo, especially like on the ground sometimes, I'm very close. Since I'm not very like mobile with my legs, my hamstrings, I'm pretty stiff too. I have a lot of uh, close encounters with leg cramps. Okay. Do you have that in uh, Muay Thai or? Uh? Not so much. I can't say I've really experienced that in Muay Thai. Maybe your calves cramp up yeah. there. Um, I've had uh, so that that first time when I was in Thailand and I was I was really training a lot and like uh, I have a habit. I still have a, that habit too of. I, I tense up my, my traps and I raise up my shoulders and they're always telling me like relax 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 and I, I, I realized I was using my my upper body so much when I was punching that I got I got so sore that if I if I shrugged up it hurt because my muscles were so sore so that um, it was good because whenever I would feel it when I was training I would I would I would go up here and I'd be ow and I was like yeah I have to it forced me to to learn to relax my yeah. my shoulder. I didn't have a choice. If I did this, it hurt. Um, that's the only really cramping type stuff I've ever really experienced in in Muay Thai. But doing jujitsu, oh freaking all yeah. the time. My hamstrings, quads, uh, my feet, uh, my toes. Um, did a lot of cramping in jujitsu. Yeah. And yeah. do you have like uh, ways or trainings or ways to mitigate? Um, so I started a program with uh, one of the trainers at uh, it's a place called Centre Replay. Um, okay. I don't know what type, what part of Montreal it's in. Metro Rosemont. I don't know where. Oh that, yeah, that that's is. in uh, Montreal. I don't know what that, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't know what's not considered, but uh, uh, they're they're great for working with fighters. Um, okay. They're like a real like one stop shop, you know, um, and. Uh, um, they specialize in working with fighters, uh, so it's a really great split, great place to be. And um, the physiotherapist, the owner, uh, Viviane, I worked with her for. I told her like I do jujitsu and I can't do this. I can't do this move. I can't do that move. I can't do this move because I just can't move my body that way. And then so she gave me these exercises uh, to do where it's gonna help me um, get more strength, get more strength in those ranges of motion. Um, so I that and that's helped. Um, and even sometimes I do the exercise in the first couple reps, I'll cramp up, but then after it, it, it stops, you know. So the more I do it, the less uh, kind of cramping up I get. Um, so I, that that's been helping me so far. Yeah, and a lot of, and then you know, getting massages every now and then, getting treatments. That's one thing fighters don't do enough is um, get treatments, like taking care of your body. Uh, you know. Um, it's, it's like, it, you know, it's like if you're a NASCAR driver and you have a problem with your car, you're going to, if you don't know how to do it, you're going to take your car to the shop and get your car fixed, you know. Yeah. If you're a fighter and you, you something with your body, your, your body's your tool, it's your it's your vehicle, you know, like something's wrong with it, it's not working properly, they're just, uh, ah, I'll just, man, it's my elbow's been hurting for three months now and like they still haven't seen anybody for it. I'm like, you just yeah. go get it, look, and they fix it. They're like, it's, yeah. <laughs> Um, at first, I wasn't like that. At first, I was uh, kind of the same kind of macho guy attitude, you know, like oh, it's it's fine. I'll walk it off, you know, it'll go away. But then uh, it was the once I start once I got hip surgery and and uh, I realized the difference it makes when you have an expert treating your body um, like a vehicle, like a machine, you know, and they find the spots and they give you the exercises. I'm like, and my body just started healing so much faster. It's like now it's. Uh, no, I don't go, even I'll, I'll go to an osteo or physio session if nothing's wrong with me. I'll just, I'll just, I'll go and we'll just do a general, like a tune up, you know, and they'll find things that I didn't even know. They're like, oh, you're a bit stiff here. And, you know, and I'll be like, I had no idea. And, and most of the time something hurts. So they usually, there's usually always something to work on, but, uh, yeah. That's very smart because like you said, a lot of people, you know, they act tough yeah but you know it's not smart because you don't get to fight as long yeah years yeah exactly ago. the number one killer is injuries you really yeah. that's the one thing that that uh you know why does anybody stop the sport usually is injuries exactly um, it's, and it's it slows you down if you're injured you can't train fully um it, it slows you down so much so as the more you can avoid injuries the the, the better off you'll be Exactly, and uh, see right now it's uh, six o'clock. So oh, okay, yeah. After call. the call, you want to 
go for a more or uh, um sure i mean my call's usually about an hour i don't know if uh, oh okay yeah <laughs> We'll take a, we'll do a part two for sure. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, yeah, there's a lot right. of stuff we. Uh, for sure, cool. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do this again. Uh, it's great. It was an honor uh, having you on. Hey, thank you, man. It's uh, a pleasure. Like said, uh, uh, we'll be back. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On it. And uh, is there anything uh, you would like to uh, promote or? Uh, um. Well, hey, if you want to check out Warrior Spirit, uh, <laughs> they have they have great gear. I use it. Uh, I love especially the Hydro Bag. Uh, yeah. Great workout tool. Uh, works the stability in the different parts of your body, the shoulders, your core. It's a great tool. I really like using it. Um, Apex, obviously. Uh, I really think Apex. I've seen other gyms. I've been to other gyms, and I really think uh, that that we're the best you know and I'll be obviously I'm biased but I really do think we're the best like we're really um, and this is not even just me saying this it's what people when they come to the gym they say this is that we're we're a community you know like we're yeah. we're a big family really uh, we're, a, we're a small gym um, but that makes us much closer um, some of these other gyms they're they're big you know big name gyms but you don't get any attention from any of the the coaches because they're focused on their their top guys you know here here you show up you walk in you you know we know everybody's <laughs> i was gonna say we know everybody's names but uh not so great with names but you come, getting bigger. <laughs> you come long enough and we'll get to know your name know your face that's for sure yeah. um but uh you know you, you come in from day one you know the head coach is shaking your hand uh how you doing giving you talking to you right away and um we you know we focus on just having fun we want people to come in here we don't not you know we understand not everyone's here to be a fighter right and most people are here to just get in shape and and yeah. have fun and if if they want to compete and you know we're going to take them there for sure um but really our, our goal is just to have people have fun and uh, get a good training in learn learn the good skills while having fun getting in shape and uh having a good time uh, that's you know. good yeah and apex gym from uh, i talked to other friends that were in the kickboxing community and they said uh, apex it's uh it's a staple so uh, yeah yeah you know i heard people they say tristar is good but if you want to focus on kickboxing and muay thai, and muay thai apex yeah. is the place for apex sure is the place to be so, for sure uh, yeah and i i started training here too and uh everything you said i agree <laughs> yeah so uh guys on that note also check out like Greg said, our Warrior Spirit store, we have uh, excellent training gear, like the Hydro Power Bag. No, it's fighter approved, as you said, as yeah. uh, Greg <laughs> said. So um, check out our gear, martial arts, uh, fitness gear also. And uh, use the code WSGREG as well for 10% off on your purchase. And uh, for the web page of Apex Gym, it will be in the description down below. For uh, Greg's Instagram, it will be down below. And uh, on that note, guys, only share in your warrior. AC out. PV out. Greg out. <laughs> <laughs>